covered Shropshire ghost stories in my series on Shrewsbury, Mary Webb, Charlotte Bird, and in other vlogs. So this vlog is offered as a postscript, if you like, to capture some of those stories that I've missed. Whether Shrewsbury is the most haunted town in the UK and Shropshire the most, most haunted county is open to debate. I, indeed, I, I don't like these lists of, you know, the top ten or the top, you know. I, I know they appeal to people, but, you know, they're just made up, aren't they? There's no real basis to them. So I, I don't like to repeat it, but, you know, there's certainly plenty of material for this vlog. Let's put it that way. And maybe there's enough material for further vlogs, so if you do express an interest, uh, please, please list it in the comments and, and like this video and I'll do more. Punchball Inn in Bridge North claims a number of ghostly sightings, including that of a disfigured former landlord named Harold, who roams the pub with his Irish wolfhound at his side. He's ruined to have killed his wife and his little girl called Jessie, who also haunts the pub. The current landlords claim that their son used to talk to Jessie when he was only two years old. Uh, the Hen and Chickens, now known as the Friars, is a 17th century coaching inn just off the main St Mary's Street in Bridge North. Uh, there have been many ghost sightings in the inn including sightings in the cellar, a monk in the bar and a spirit that passes through the wall into the adjoining building. One night the barman went down to the ancient cellar that belonged to the previous property to bring some packets of crisps to put behind the bar. The inn was fairly busy when he heard a screaming from the cellar and then he rushed, down the stairs, rushed up from the stairs as white as a sheet. He sat down and told how he had put his arm under a low shelf only for a hand to grip his arm with great strength. It was with such force that he was badly bruised. Apparently the ghost loves cheese and onion and he was taking the last packet of cheese and onion. The disused railway tunnel which runs under Bridge North is believed to be haunted. Uh, during the last war when the tunnel was still in use the entrance was guarded by members of the Home Guard. One night while on duty, a young soldier saw a ghostly figure coming towards him from out of the tunnel. He experienced a feeling of extreme terror which prompted him to aim his rifle at the figure. He remained rooted to the spot for what seemed to be hours as the figure moved closer until it disappeared. Since the closure of the tunnel, it's been used as a playground by local children. One bonfire night, when playing with fireworks in a tunnel, a ghostly, brightly figure came towards the children who ran away in terror vowing never to enter the tunnel again. It's rumoured that when the tunnel was in, in use the glasses and tables at the Swan pub above would rattle as the trains passed underneath. Do you know I, I, that reminds me I, I went to Prague when it was still behind the Iron Curtain I'm sure I'm sure I'm thinking of Prague yeah and I went I went to a museum or could it have been no it must have been Prague it must have been Prague and we went to a museum and the metro must have run underneath the museum and uh, there was there was all this wonderful stuff in glass cases but every time the, the metro ran underneath these glass cases shook like mad yeah <laughs> F. Cosford Museum is home to the only true Lincoln RF-398 long-range heavy bomber which was built in 1945. The bomber seems to be a favourite place for the ghost of a young man. Many staff have experienced some strange ghostly occurrences. In 1980 a member of staff was locking up for an evening when he saw someone moving inside the aircraft. The staff member re-entered the hangar to see who it was looking all around the aircraft before in the, turning the lights off again. It was then that a cloudy thing appeared. Later that week, a manic mechanic was working on an aircraft and was fumbling around for a spanner, which was then thrust into his hand. Uh, the electrician also fell while working, 15 foot above ground, 
the electrician claimed he floated to a stop instead of hitting the ground, as if some unseen force was assisting him. Legend has it that the pilot of a bomber called Hiller loved the aircraft so much that is on his last flight he said he would haunt it. Hiller was killed near Cosford in an air crash. A nearby White Lady's Priory is something of a mystery. The ruins have stood since 1186. All that is known about his site is that it is used to house nuns who wore white religious clothes. Visitors have spotted white figures through the walls and heard prayers chanting while passing through the haunted site. Seen that the old bit, bit Bildwas power station cut into the boundaries of the Bildwas Abbey, especially the uh, station's coal bay, <coughs> where a ghostly monk has been had been seen. The black monk is said to haunt the abbey ruins, but more recently scarred the pa- scared the pants of people in the power station itself. One worker was loading a great bucket upon his digger with coal. When in the space left by the bucket, he noticed the shape of what he thought was a woman. Thinking he'd have stumbled across a murder victim, the worker got down from his cab, but before he even reached the get- ground, the figure floated towards him before it vanished, just a few feet in front of him. Another employee had seen an apparition of a phantom lady floating towards him, but then disappearing in front of his eyes. A residents in nearby Leighton village have experienced both audio and visual paranormal activity in the area around Bildwas Power Station. Uh, the, build, the power station's cooling towers used to dominate the skyline of Shropshire. As a child, I recall it be, them being built and, it's, and their red lights being visible at night from as far away as Condover, where I lived. Uh, during the late Victorian period, a gentleman was carrying his wa- the wages of his workers at the limestone works near Bethnal Edge when he was set upon by robbers. A gentleman, or was he simply the manager, realised that he recognised the men and they were no other than his colleagues and begged with them to stop. They didn't listen, panicked at the fact that they were known, so they beat him further and threw him down an old mine shaft. Uh, then the robbers sealed him up the, up the shaft with a large stone, leaving him for dead. When he was eventually missed, a search was organised, only to find that the man's efforts to get out from under his tomb had led to him being crushed to death when the stone had slipped. Walkers still hear his clo- calls for help echo around the edge and from below the stone. Not too far from the manager's tomb is Bethnal Pool. On certain days of the year, the pool is said to turn of a violet shade of red. This is due to a horrendous crime that occurred one summer's day, when a woman was walking from a small cottage near the the edge to Ironbridge to meet her fiancé. The girl was excited to see her beloved and didn't notice the approaching limestone workers. These would be the last souls she met, for the workers brutally assaulted her and eventually murdered her. The poor girl was left face down in the pool. When she didn't arrive at the tontine, her fiancé began to worry. He asked people in the bar and outside if they'd seen her, but no one had heard from her. He decided the only thing he could do was trace the path and see if he could find her. He found his love face down, clothes torn and covered from head to toe in blood. He can still be heard crying to this day and the woman is often seen near the water's edge still bedraggled and bloodstained, staring into the waters, watching them turn from blue to blood red. During the the winter months, the River Severn rises and becomes very treacherous at Jackfield. Two young women, two young twins, were playing on the spoil heaps of the Craven Dunhill tile works when the bank collapsed into the river, taking the two boys with it. They were swept to a point below the footbridge at Jackfield, where they were caught in the branches from an overhanging tree. Their bodies were spotted later and recovered, still holding hands from the water. To this young day, children 
can be heard crying in a house where they were first taken. The Ironbridge Gorge is supposedly patrolled by a phantom boatman sailing a ghost barge full of corpses. At the ship's helm, a, dark, a tall dark figure stands, often described as wearing clothes or a dark cloak. As the barge sails slowly down the river, the ghastly, ghost, ghostly cargo is revealed. The ghost barge is often witnessed from the top of the eye bridge. The bodies laid row by row, a pile quite high. However, almost as soon as the corpses are noticed, the barge shimmers and it inexplicably disappears from view. Further chilling visitations of old bells being witnessed further along the river in Jackfield. Here the ghostly barge is tethered to the river bedge. bed. Instead of being laden with bodies, the boat is now empty and the bargeman stands on the river bank. At his feet are the rows of the dead. The haunting is thought to have its origins in the Black Death of the 1660s, which hit Shropshire hard. It's estimated that around 15% of Shropshire people lost their lives. The bargeman at the helm of a plague ship, which was used to transport the dead to their final resting place. Uh, the River Severn is a major, was well, was a major source of transport throughout Shropshire and to the wider world. Boats travelled up and down the river, transporting goods and indeed people to their destination. However, as the plague hit, these boats began to carry the dead to plague pits to limit the spread of disease. Uh, there is evidence of plague pits located in the Jackfield area. The ghost barge of the River Severn is a plague ship following its final journey to unload its, its burden in Jackfield. The devil is said to have visited the boat inn in Jackfield just before Christmas to play cards with the locals. It was only when the card dropped on the floor and the other pl players noticed his club foot. No sooner was this discovered and a great gust of wind blew through the door and swept the devil out. Guests have also reported an old lady sitting on their bed. More recently the landlady awoke to find a young lady sitting beside her bed beckoning her downstairs. When, when she went downstairs, she found the ground floor window forced open, although nobody had got in. Although at six in the morning, the sounds of someone stomping around downstairs can still be heard. The Tontine Hotel itself in Ironbridge has five haunted bedrooms, all with different ghosts. Room five is supposedly the scariest one. Once, when, when the hotel was f uh, full, a guest slept in his car, rather than share room five with its malevolent presence. The White Hart in Ironbridge has ghosts which roam the corridors at night, keeping the guests awake. Things have flown across the bar and the imprint of a man's face appeared on the glass of the window and remained there for weeks. <laughs> Castle is reputed to be haunted by Marion de la Brua, who in 1138 was betrayed by a lover and enemy of the castle, Arnold de Lys. Marion was in the habit of leaving a rope hanging from the castle's battlements to enable Arnold to visit her in secret. But one night he used the rope to gain access for his hundred soldiers, who took control of the castle. When she realised what her lover had done, Marion slit Arnold's throat with her own sword before throwing herself to death from the hanging tower onto the rocks below. Marion's spirit is still spotted from time to time at dusk. It's also been said that if you happen to visit on the anniversary of her death, you will hear her scream as she plunged to her death. Uh, the nearby Castle Lodge is somewhere I was fascinated by. Not least his eccentric former owner and guide, Bill Pearson. A lady in Tudor clothing has been seen walking the corridors and disappearing through the walls. On the top floor, footly ghost steps are frequently reported. Uh, the Feathers Hotel in, is a 17th century coaching inn, which is well known for its famous Tudor beams and historic past. It's also been known for being one of the most haunted places in Shropshire. Uh, the most haunted spot in the hotel is said to be room 211, where a jealous spirit dwells. 
He said to hate women and on one occasion a female guest was dragged from a bed by the hair. After getting back to sleep she was awoken again with the sensation of a, a bucket of ice cold water being thrown of her. But the bed remained perfectly dry. Uh, whilst the spirit seemed aggressive towards her, apparently her partner had a rather peaceful sleep, feeling the sensation of his cheek being stroked. There had been sightings of a man in Victorian clothing walking through rooms 232 and 233 with his dog before vanishing into thin air. Another more contemporary ghost is sometimes seen in the car park. She's said to be dressed very scantily in a mini dress, wearing a pair of clogs and is said to walk through the cars and then fade away. Uh, being scantily dressed and wearing clogs, however, would not be unusual uh, in Ludlow even today. Now, I did once book a room at the hotel and slept, slept rather badly in a four-poster bed, but cannot report any sightings of my own. In the Bluebird pub, Ludlow, a soldier from the nearby castle, was seen at the blue at the pub, and is named as the officer of the tower. Uh, when last seen in the nineteen fifties, he wore a blue tunic um, with shiny silver buttons. Other ghosts said to be residing here include a cavalier soldier, an aging Victorian woman, a pipe smoking man, and a teenage girl. A poltergeist in the bar is said to open doors and spin the hands of the clock. Another poltergeist is active at the Bull Hotel, opposite the Feathers. CTC cameras have shown glasses being moved about the shelves on their own. The CTC cameras have also alerted bar staff to figures upstairs, but immediate searches reveal no one is there. At the Weed Chief Inn, Patrons can sit by a roaring fire, but won't necessarily keep be kept warm as this area and the bedroom above it are the subject of sudden and inexplicably icy chills. St Lawrence's Church Ludlow is supposedly haunted by an old woman wearing a long robe and having grey hair. She moves throughout the churchyard between the graves, also near the rectory. It's been suggested that she may appear more often on a summer's evening and sometimes is known to scream. <laughs> the Court Hotel is a fine Elizabethan manor house. At one time there was a small terrace of coal miners' cottages in the hollow. Since their destruction, the cottages and occupants sometimes make a ghostly return. An old lady is sometimes near, seen before the entrance of the house, smiling before disappearing. Monks were said to walk the grounds. One family suffered from an influx of monastic figures sitting upon the crossbeams in the Great Hall. St Michael's Churchyard, mainly, a gentle ghost, is supposed to haunt the grounds. She is frequently reported wandering through the graveyard, occasionally stopping at certain graves before continuing her journey, only to lay flowers at one of the older, more neglected gravestones. The churchyard contains several cast-iron tombstones, including those of W. Uh, J. W. Fletcher, who died in 1785, and Robert Richard Anstice, died 1873, a stone to and a stone tombstone of Robert Parker, the in inventor, War graves of seven British Army soldiers of World War Two and two soldiers and, and an airman of World War, uh, sorry World War One, and two soldiers and an airman of World War Two. The churchyard is the resting place of the nine men of Maidley, miners who lost their lives at Brickkill Lisa Ironstone Mine in 1864. The youngest was aged only 12 years old. William Dyer, uh, 1872 to 1940, was a first-class cricketer, local businessman and politician, and he is buried at the family vault. Set and cutting near Market Drayton, a shrieking spe spectre has been seen and heard, and a tirely, tirely middle lock just beyond Market Drayton is reported to have its own helpful resident ghost. 
If you come up to it in the middle of the night, the ghost will push the lock gate shut behind your boat. This manor in Mumford Bridge, 1450, is believed that the original, although it's believed the original building uh, was uses was used as an Anglo as Saxon house hall. The property fell into the hands of the Bailey family uh, in the 18th century and is still uh, the same family who owned Fitz Manor. A homosexual priest was found out and then crucified against the wall of the drawing room. This has certainly left its mark because a number of visitors are reported hearing a disembodied screaming coming from the drawing room. There's also quite a few more Shropshire ghosts that are said to haunt Fitz Manor including a Victorian lady who appears in the Red Room in the churchyard. There's also apparently a painting of the woman in the attic. The Orange Room is haunted and on many occasions guests have reported the smell of burning or tobacco. Burton Corbett Castle is supposedly haunted by the ghost of a Puritan who was cast out by the Corbett family after initially being harboured by them during the reign of King James I. He took shelter in nearby woods, returning only to curse the house and his residence with this declaration. Rejoice not in thy wretches, not in, the, not in monuments of thy pride, for neither thou nor thy children nor thy children's children shall inhabit these halls. The curse was indeed fulfilled because it's scared the family so much that none of them would live in the house again and it fell into ruin. Mills House, 1682 in Much Wenlock. People claim that faces appear at the windows and children in Victorian outfits have been seen playing with spinning tops on the balcony. In 1984, when renovation work was being undertaken, a previously unknown cemetery was discovered. Uh, the skeletons of an adult male uh, was the first to be unearthed from beneath the wall. Later, the remains of two young ladies adjacent to the wall were excavated. It's thought they may be Saxon or Roman civilians who lived nearby. For many years, resident, local residents had talked of seeing groups of people Heads lowered, standard in the yard and nearby passage. More recently, there were reports of a haunted supermarket in Much Wenlock, when workers began carrying out improvements to the spa shop. Things started happening. Shopping trolleys be began moving on their own, which I find rather, rather amazing, as they don't even move when pushed. Heavy breathing was heard, and there were apparitions the problem started after the builder dug up ancient property and old bones underneath the building. In early 2002, a trainee manager claimed, I was sitting over, over by the computer, I could hear breathing, I opened the door but no one's there. Uh, what's been going on at the moment isn't enough. Is enough. I'm, I'm, it's enough, I'm frightened, I'm frightened of it. Another worker claimed, I was going back to wash some cups. When I saw something appear, it stayed for like 15 seconds and then disappeared totally. The shop is on the site of a medieval alehouse, but when they were digging, the builders found unexpected remains, items of crockery, lots of bones, definitely human bones. The Abbey Cemetery was moved there in the 12th century. Eleven Towns is a village created from eleven small hamlets under a charter of 1310. Uh, locals tell of mist rolling up from the valley engulfing the churchyard and old Wrighton Castle. Following the mist, a headless horseman is seen riding towards the old castle keep before disappearing through ever-thickening mist. Coton, which means town next door, is one of the hamlets. Coton Hall was owned at the time by the Corbett, by Corbett Kinniston and he is said to haunt the house, or rather did. Uh, there is another Coton Hall in South Shropshire, and I believe this Coton Hall is now known as Wrighton Hall. 
However, Cootenham Hill is a district of Shrewsbury, uh, on the road towards uh, right and eleven towns. So you know, maybe I'm wrong. In uh, 1788, the Reverend David Evans decided to put up put old Corbett to rest because his antics and noise were becoming unbearable. Reverend Evans and five other ministers entered Coton Hall, prayed for the souls to rest while they held candles. Uh, by midnight, they'd enticed Corbett into a bottle, which was sealed before being thrown into the nearby pool. Although this was supposed to work for 1,000 years, tenants in Coton Hall at the turn of the century complained of milk churns rolling about and a bush at the edge of the pool bursting into blue flames. Shifnell was a clock tower, but the Burgess took ill before it was completed, and as he lay on his bed he tried to insist that the clock tower should not be completed. However, the town took no notice, and the day following the Burgess's funeral, the construction of the clock tower resumed, and it was completed on time. Ever since that day, there's been regular reports of ghostly figures seen climbing or leaping across the clock face. It's been suggested that this is the spirit of Burgess, as he renews his efforts to stop the clock. Town Hall was largely destroyed by fire in 1995. When a photo of the blaze was published in which a young girl could clearly be seen standing in the flames, a locals believe her to be the ghost of Jane Churn, a young girl who was accused of arson in the town in 1677. Whittington Castle near Oswestry has a long and colourful history. In 845, the Welsh prince Inir ap Cadvark built a castle at Withington, which was seized by Norman Lord Roger de Montgomery after 1066. Montgomery then gave it to William, William Peveril of the Peak, who built a new castle on the site. Uh, when his daughter Mellet wanted to marry, the challenge was put out to the bravest knight in the land, with Whittington Castle as the dowry. Garin de Metz, Sheriff of Shropshire, won the contest, wife and the castle. Their descendants, the Fitzwarrens, have held the castle for over 400 years. In the twin gatehouse towers of the once proud castle, the ghost of two small children are often seen peering out of the small windows. They're believed to have died in terrible circumstances after a cursed Elizabethan chest was open. The chest was hidden away for many years, but recently has been taken away to be restored. Uh, the chest still remains locked, and its key is thought to have been lost in the moat. Other paranormal activities have been witnessed in the ruins, with the appearance of a horseman in ancient costume, and white mists and balls of light appearing from nowhere. During public tours that a number of visitors have gotten frightened after death, by the apparition of a man in a hood standing under the gateway. There's also tales of paranormal activity in the guards room. Another common sighting is the tall blacksmith in a traditional leather apron. Wilderhout Manor was built in the latter part of the 16th century by Francis Smallman, whose initials and those of his wife Ellen appear in the plasterwork of the ceiling. There is apparently a ghost of a cavalier who haunts the main hall. During a recent sighting on the first night, nothing happened but the following day, when scaffolding was, uh, was put up on a painting, the fine plaster ceiling, suddenly he became aware of a tall figure standing in the doorway. At first he thought it was a warden checking up on him, but then he noticed that the man was dressed in a full cloak, a floppy hat with a large boom, and a thigh-length boots. He then thought it was a visitor in fancy, fancy dress, but when he said hello, all the visitor did was raise his head slightly before walking across the room and, sp and, and through a solid wall. He is joined on occasions by a young girl who smiles sweetly before screaming. <laughs> 